Christy and I am a professional dancer and singer on cruise ships and I thought I would make this video today to help you out and give you some advice on how you can be a dancer and singer on ships as well. I have been working on ships since 2015 so it has been quite some time and all during that time I have had people reaching out to me, friends, strangers, you name it and they all have been curious about what it takes to perform on cruise ships and what the audition process is like and how to be set up for success. It is a beautiful sea day today. I am not working tonight and I thought that I would get the iPad out, write some notes and share with you a few helpful tips and tricks. That being said, I do not speak for the brand or the company that I work for, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm just sharing what I picked up along the way, and hopefully it could be a little bit helpful for you. Think of me as your big sister. So, the iPad is out. <laughs> I thought I'd share a little bit about myself first. I grew up doing classical ballet and I loved it so so much and I saw Phantom of the Opera which was my first musical theater show that I ever saw and I fell in love and I was like that's it that's what I want to do with my life so I did musical theater in high school and then I went on to college to get a four-year BFA degree in musical theater and I really feel like it set me up for success and I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't have that as my background. But that being said, you do not need to have a four-year degree to do what I do. The beauty of this industry is that people come from all different backgrounds and everyone performs and lives in harmony so you don't have to have some specific background to do this performing job. Yeah, so I graduated from college in musical theater and I worked on ships immediately. I didn't even get to walk my graduation in a cap and gown and I left school a little bit early to start my career, which was very exciting. I did audition in person and it has been quite some time since I've auditioned so everything I say might be a wee bit dated but I have been kind of keeping up to date with the audition process so I feel like the advice that I have to give is still pretty on point <laughs> but there might be a few surprises along the way So I wanted to share with you, there are two ways to audition to become a singer or dancer on cruise ships, and that is online or in person. And like I just said, I auditioned in person, and I would say that's preferable if you have the ability to audition for this cruise line in person, absolutely go for it. But if not, and if traveling to that audition city is not an option for you, I know at least for the company I work for, they do take online submissions seriously. And as long as you just do all the requirements that they ask for, they will be happy to look at you and go from there. So how to find an audition is you look online. I used Backstage.com which is a subscription based service for musical theater performers but my company just advertises on their website, their personal entertainment website and I know a lot of other companies do it as well so technically it should not cost you to find these auditions and if there is a website asking for payment to show you this audition information it's probably not an authentic website if it's not backstage.com if that makes sense <laughs> so how to find that audition information is you would search XYZ cruise line plus the word entertainment or XYZ cruise line plus auditions and they usually have their own entertainment website and you can find all that information on there whether it's an in-person audition or an online audition, all that information will be there. So if you can attend in person, definitely, by all means, go ahead and do that. The next step I would do is do a little bit of research. My company has two different kinds of positions. They have dancers who sing and singers who dance. 
and a dancer who sings, which is what I am, is someone who is strongest in dancing, who can also sing very well, so I have a few little solo lines here and there to sing, but mostly I'm just holding down the fort with those harmonies. And a singer who dances is someone who primarily sings, but loves to dance as well and does a few little solid backup moves. The audition breakdown should tell you what is expected of you for each of those things, and you can decide what you'd like best. I know for other cruise lines there are just straight singers and straight dancers so the singers would stand on center and sing their song and then leave the stage and then or the dancers would simply dance to the singing and then leave the stage as well. Um, so if you're not able to do both things very well maybe apply to some other cruise lines that are looking specifically for singers or specifically for dancers. If you're applying online, they're probably going to ask for your audition reel of you singing or dancing from various other productions that you've done. And if you haven't done a lot, I really would not stress. I, if I were you, I would get in a dance studio and sing a ton or dance a ton, get a friend to help you film, and you can put together a lot of really good combinations or songs that really shows off who you are as a performer that would give them the idea of what you would be like if you were live in the audition room. My biggest piece of advice for people auditioning online is to make sure that you tick every single box that the company is asking for. So I know for my company they ask for your show reel, but then they also ask for a few different pieces of additional information. So I believe they ask for a video of you doing some kicks for the dancers, and I believe even the singers are asked to do some pirouettes as well. So just make sure that you do all of the completed requirements because that's truly a reflection on you as a performer to make sure that you have put your best foot forward and that you are the best that you can be. Now if you're auditioning live, you're going to be doing both singing and dancing. So even if you're a dancer who sings or a singer who dances, they're going to want to see both from you. So make sure you're prepared to both sing and dance on the day of the audition. Now let's talk about what to wear, one of my favorite things. For the dance portion, I would make sure you wear something really comfortable, but also something pretty trendy and on point with the styles of today. My company is looking for something really commercial, so imagine if you were auditioning to be a Beyonce backup dancer. Or I would say I would also reference the Millennium Dance Complex YouTube videos. It's a dance studio out of Los Angeles and all of their dancers are really professionals and they are always wearing the most amazing outfits. So if you're a little bit out of a loss to know what to wear, I would definitely look up Millennium Dance Complex in LA on YouTube and see what those performers are wearing. I would go for some solid colors for sure. Um, I would probably wear all black, but that's just my preference, and I think that a really pretty standout jewel tone would also do really well. I would wear something form-fitting and make sure that it's comfortable. And the other thing that I would definitely say is make sure you have worked in this outfit before. So make sure whatever outfit you're wearing for the dance portion, you have also worn in a dance class and make sure that it moves very nicely on your body. I would also make sure to bring character heels, regular stiletto heels, and some sort of flat shoe, whether it be a very trendy jazz shoe. I would stay away from ballet shoes, but they will be asking for a like technique cut, so that's when I would wear the jazz shoes. I would be as prepared as possible with all of your shoes. The only thing I can guarantee they will not be asking for is tap shoes. For the singing portion, I would give the exact same advice to wear something that you've worn before and that you know you can move in and that you're comfortable in, if at all possible, because sometimes auditions are really, really chaotic. I would wear something that can be worn both in the dancing portion and in the singing portion, in the sense that you have some layers that you can wear on top 
or take off as needed. So make sure in the dance portion you're wearing something very dance heavy, but then in the singing portion, maybe add a different bottom or a jacket or something like that because sometimes you won't have time to change, but you want to make sure you have a separate outfit for the two, if that makes sense. Something else I would say is make sure that you're not wearing like a church dress. I would not suggest wearing something that is really like buttoned up and really formal. They want to see something a little more trendy. Again, think of if you're auditioning to be a backup dancer, a backup singer, you want to look like you're someone who is in the industry, who knows what to wear, maybe a a little jacket or something like that and my biggest piece of advice for clothing for the singing portion is not to wear character heels I would definitely say wear a really nice heel for the ladies and same thing for the gentlemen make sure you're not wearing a dance shoe I would wear a regular street shoe For the dance portion, I would be really prepared to do some technical things so that's probably going to be pirouettes kicks, leaps, turns, something like that. And then you're going to go into a more hip hop jazz geared combination and then also more of a commercial dance combination as well. And they'll probably be making cuts throughout those different combinations. For singing, I would prepare a few pop rock songs and then maybe something a little bit more classical in the musical theater genre, but I know with my company, they're much more interested in commercial than classical singing. So make sure you bring that mix belt, that belt. They're really gonna wanna hear you show off those riffs. Definitely keep in mind that there is a huge array of shows that you would be performing on ships. So one night you might be performing a rock concert and then the next night you're performing a disco and then the next you might be performing more classical Broadway. So make sure to keep in mind all of those things when you're preparing. You want to show off your versatility and you want to be able to be unfazed by any different dance form. Throughout the audition, they're going to be making different cuts. They're going to be asking people to leave, asking people to stay, and hopefully you'll still be there at the end of the day, and that's when they collect your information, and they ask what your availability is for your potential start date for a contract, and then they will keep you on file and call you whenever they need someone for a contract. This is the same for online submissions. You'll be on file, and you'll have your availability set, so that way they know they can ask you to work at a certain time. I think it's really important to be truthful about availability. I know you want to say you can start tomorrow, but that might not actually be true. Maybe you're finishing up another production or something like that. So make sure you're truthful because they do understand that you might have previous commitments. For me, I auditioned and I found out in a few weeks my contract offer and then I was off on my ship within, again, a few weeks but it's different for every person. I've heard of people who have been on the books for months before they got a contract offer, and I've also heard of people who were truly only given two weeks before they were able to board the ship, and it was a very crazy quick process. Something to keep in mind as well, for all cruise ships, no matter what cruise line, you're going to need a full medical, and it is not covered by insurance, and it costs it's, it varies the cost, but it's probably going to cost around $400 to $700 out of pocket. And that is the standard, unfortunately. So you'll have to do a complete medical. Um, I believe there's checks at chest x-rays, there is blood work, there's all sorts of crazy stuff so they'll send you a packet on everything that they need completed by you and your doctor and it is a very chaotic process so I might do a whole nother video on that because it is very extensive and I was very surprised on my first contract that I had to do that. So once your medical is cleared then you can join the ship but you can't join the ship until then unfortunately. Some little outgoing thoughts that I've been just thinking of. Just make sure you're really positive in the audition room. They love to see smiling faces and they want to know that you're going to be a good team member because something to keep in mind is that 
you're gonna be living with all your other performers and it's really important that you are an amicable person and that you can get along with everyone pretty easily because you're gonna be stuck with them for six seven months on board and you want to make sure that it's a really healthy lovely working environment and that everyone is a really big team player you're also going to have other duties other than performing so for example as a dancer I will do some dance classes we have a little kids story time that we read them little stories which is super fun we also help with safety so there's a lot of safety drills and embarkation duties that revolve around you know demonstrating how to put on a life jacket and making sure everyone knows where to go in an emergency so definitely keep that in mind when you're auditioning that there's going to be a few other things that they ask you to do on top of performing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I feel like there's a million things I missed and I need to do a part two to this video. So if you have any more questions, please leave them down below and I will definitely try to get back with you on that. This has been really fun chatting with you. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Feel free to like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more ship life content. Thanks, see ya.